In yesterday's game, the Las Vegas Raiders absolutely crushed the Los Angeles Chargers. From start to finish, the Raiders were way more prepared. They better executed. Uh, they played more inspired. Just everything about it looked really, really nice yesterday. And watching the tape, you definitely see some of those same things. And of course, today we're going to talk about some of the things that I saw on tape. Uh, there are a lot of really, really nice things from the offensive side of the football. Uh, starting with Aiden McConnell, man, the guy was on fire yesterday. Uh, and, I, you know, I don't think it was just Aiden McConnell that was on fire. I felt like Bo Hardegree deserves a ton of credit. Uh, he did things that we really haven't seen from the Raiders. And he's kind of been doing this for the entire season. He doesn't get the credit that he deserves. Uh, I know he's a rookie play caller with the rookie quarterback. And I know some people say the offense struggles and they put it only on Bo Hardegree. But we do got to remember as a rookie quarterback that Aiden McConnell is, it's hard, right? It's very, very hard to play in the NFL. So Hardegree is, is, is kind of... Uh, he's kind of limited in the aspect that he has a rookie quarterback, and it does make it hard for him. But Hardegree deserves a lot of credit. Um, uh, Brandon Bolden ran a wildcat play, and he took it the distance, right? It was like 30 yards. And to me, that's a great play to put into the offensive playbook, right? We have not ran wildcat this season, or at least I don't remember the Raiders running wildcat at all this season. Um, so to me, that's a fantastic play to kind of add Coming into this game, right? You want to win this game. You got to add plays week in, week out. You got to put new wrinkles and twists into the offensive scheme. You got to keep defenses guessing. Uh, Bo Hardegree did that with that wildcat play. Even the Jacoby Myers pass to Devontae Adams. To me, that was a pan that was a fantastic way in the red zone to be able to score. You know, we've had red zone issues in the past. And one of the ways to score in the red zone is to understand what the defense is trying to do, right? Uh, understanding that, hey, if you run it to the right or if you throw a quick pass to the right it is the cornerback's responsibility to step up and make the play and in this instance they just do it right behind him so to me that's a fantastic play designed by Bo Hardegree right Bo Hardegree is playing to win the game he's playing for a job and uh, he did a great job with those new twists and wrinkles that he kind of threw in there on top of that Aiden McConnell was on fire man the touchdown passes that this guy had the non-touchdown passes downfield in between, you know, two or three defenders, the guy was zipping it in there. Uh, Aiden O'Connell deserves an absolute game ball. The guy was on fire yesterday. And it makes me doubt if Aiden O'Connell, and it makes me doubt my opinion of Aiden O'Connell. You know, I, you know, going into the game yesterday, I was 100% sure the Raiders should replace Aiden O'Connell. Uh, today, I'm not 100% sure they should. Uh, I obviously am still leaning that the Raiders should replace Aiden O'Connell. Uh, just to be honest, you guys. Uh, but I don't know, right? Whoever the next coach is, uh, AP or whoever else, offense coach, whoever it ends up being, the general manager, they're going to have a tough-ass decision because what Aiden O'Connell has shown us, there's a lot to like about this kid, man. To me, Aiden O'Connell looks good passing the football. Uh, and now we're going to get into the offensive line because I think that's one of the things that a lot of people feel. If you can protect Aiden O'Connell and you give him the opportunity to throw the ball and do those type of things, he'll have success. And although Aiden O'Connell was kept clean yesterday, and I felt like the O-line did a pretty good job, uh, I feel like there's things that the Raiders kind of do that help the offensive line that other teams with good old offensive lines don't necessarily do. Uh, first and foremost, before we even get into that, I, I should just give some credit where credit's due. Uh, Dylan Parham stepped into the center position with Andre James out, and he had a pretty damn good game. Uh, left tackle Darren Munford stepped in with Colton Miller out at the left tackle spot, although it is the second week starting there, and he had a phenomenal game. Uh, I, once again, you know, last week it was Danell Hunter who had a, who he had a pretty good game against. This week it was Khalil Mack who had a who he had a pretty damn good game against. Uh, so shout out to Darren Munford. You know, you're you're the backup swing tackle, and when the starter goes down, this is what you have to come in and do. Uh, Jermaine Illuminor, Darren Munford both had pretty damn good games. They kept uh, Khalil Mack and the rookie defenseman the Chargers have, Tuli Tapaludu, who has like eight sacks already this season. They kept those two guys in check. So credit to all of those guys that ended up playing the left guard was obviously the backup left guard. Um, it was just a really, really nice job by the offensive line. But we're going to get into some criticism of the O-line. Uh, I think the Raiders still need to revamp the offensive line. Uh, you can make the argument there's three new starters that the Raiders need. Uh, they need to get a right tackle, they need to get a right guard, and they need to get a center. I think all three of those positions need upgrades. I would start with the right tackle position first. 
uh, I would get the future right tackle, the guy that's going to anchor down this offensive line in the draft this season, right? If you have a first round pick that's like the 10th overall pick, take the best right tackle available. Of course, that would be if you're keeping Aiden McConnell and he's the quarterback of the future for you. Uh, at that point, take that right tackle, right? Um, and then at that point, you can kick Jermaine Illuminor into right guard and let him battle it out with whoever else you feel in at that right guard position. Uh, and then I would look to to possibly replace the center second. Uh, and honestly, you could probably get a, a guard and tackle in this class. Right? I'm sorry, a center and tackle in this in this draft class. Right? There's good centers that are going to come out that are going to be like second and third round picks. Um, let's talk about why I think Dylan Parm's not the not the guy for the Raiders at the center position. Uh, Parm had a pretty good game considering that he had to jump in at the center position. I know he's our backup center, but uh, going from left guard to center is completely different. Right, because you're going from putting your left hand in on the ground, left foot back, uh, right foot forward, to now you're going into the center position, and now your feet are pretty much equal, and you're snapping the ball with your right hand. Right. Um, to me, one of the things that Dylan Parham struggled with, and I think it's the same thing that Under James struggles with, which is the ability to anchor down. It's the ability to handle power, and I think one of the most important things for a center is you have to be strong to hold the bull rush you know if if you want to keep a clean pocket for your quarterback you can't have pressure from the inside and i think that's been my biggest criticism of andre james and i saw that yesterday with dylan palm on a couple of plays where he got pushed back right the guys were able to kind of get underneath him they were able to kind of toss him to the side they generated pressure to me we can't have that right the inside is the the one position where you have to anchor down and uh you know to me right away when you look at that if Dylan Parham can get stronger and learn to anchor down properly as a center, I'm okay with him. But to me, I just don't think he has it, right? I don't think he has the power and the strength to, to do that, right? Uh, plus, keep in mind, Parham was never a center in college, right? I, I think the center thing kind of started at the senior bowl when um, coaches kind of asked to see if this guy could play center. Keep in mind, most of the players at the senior bowl take snaps at center. Most guards take snaps at center, right? Peter Skronsky, left tackle, was taking center snaps, right? Um, so I don't think Dylan Parham is a long-term center. I, th I think he's best at guard. And in fact, I'd even move him right back to the right guard position at the end of the season. The guy looks way better at right guard than he does at left guard. Um, and I think he can develop into something, right? I, I don't think Dylan Parham needs to necessarily be replaced. I think keeping him at guard makes sense. I think the Raiders need to get a real center that can anchor down, that has the power, uh, that has played center and has had success at center. Because center is the most important position in terms of anchoring down and letting your quarterback feel comfortable. Parham had some good plays. He had some bad plays yesterday. Uh, he also had a bad run rep that stuck out to me right away because it was a pivotal moment of the game for the Raiders. Um You know, again, I think Dylan Parham is a perfectly fine football player. I just don't think he's the center. And I saw... A couple of comments yesterday on Twitter, like right after the game, people were posting these comments and they had like a thousand plus likes where people were saying, hey, Dylan Parm's the guy. Get rid of Andre James today. Parm should never not play center again. And to me, I'm not sure how you can get that opinion right after the game without watching the coach's film, right? The coach's film does not come out until like seven hours later, right? It drops at like 3, 4 a.m. So it doesn't make sense to me how someone could have that opinion. So I just wanted to kind of push back against that. Again, I like Dylan Parham, right? I don't think he's a bad football player at all. Now, I wanted to show you guys one more play here. One of the reasons why I think the Raiders need to really think about possibly fixing the offensive line outside of the fact that I don't think Parham's a center is that, in my opinion, sometimes one of the things the Raiders end up doing is they put way too many guys to help the offensive line. On this one, you're basically using three extra guys to chip and, and basically help to make sure the quarterback stays clean. And when you do that, when you have all these guys helping and chipping, what ends up happening is you're only having two guys running routes. That's a recipe to fail. If you guys go watch the Chiefs, the Cowboys, the Eagles, some of the best offensive lines, oftentimes they're using five-man protection. Those five guys are able to handle the four defensive linemen. The Raiders aren't really able to do that. And I think that's one of the reasons why we need to fix our offensive line. I mean, this is the final offensive play. We'll talk about the defense a little bit. Uh, Derwin James, you know, he got cute. He thought, hey, I'm going to line up in the slob and mess with this little rookie wide receiver. I want to, you know, maybe get up on him and play physical with him. And this rookie wide receiver, Trey Tucker, just smoked his ass for a touchdown. 
and Aiden O'Connell delivered a beautiful pass to Der- uh, on Derwin James. And those are the plays that really stuck out to me. Trey Tucker had a great game yesterday. Uh, he created separation more than I think people realize. He only had three catches. Uh, two of his three catches were touchdowns. But the guy was creating separation, and O'Connell wasn't able to connect with him necessarily. But Trey Tucker is going to be good, man. I'm telling you guys, this guy's going to be a very, very good football player, uh, as is Michael Mayer. I think both of those guys are going to be really, really good football players. Let's talk about the defense. Uh, Marcus Epps deserves a lot of credit. Uh, he had a play on Josh Kelly. I believe this was the first fumble we forced. Don't quote me on that. Uh, Marcus Epps was the backside safety. He pursued the play, came downhill. Uh, the running back only picked up about three and a half yards until Marcus Epps not only made the tackle, but he ripped the ball out. Uh, Marcus Epps, to me, has been one of the best signings that we've had in a number of years. Even Robert Spillane has been fantastic, but I'm going to argue that Marcus Epps is the better signing. I, I think when you're a safety, and we saw this happen with Trayvon Merrick, uh, you know, you, you'll give up a touchdown, and everybody's going to start talking about how you gave up that touchdown. You suck, you're this, you're this, you're that. But Epps has so many good plays that people don't even realize because oftentimes people aren't watching tape. You know, they're not going and watching every play and trying to figure out what the coverage is, what the responsibilities are, what a guy does. You know, so many times our secondary is taking the, you know, a a team runs the scissors concept and and that's where they're going. So many times our secondary takes that away. And, you know, it's partly because of coaching. Patrick Graham has done a good job. The secondary's coach has done a good job. Uh, you know, part of it is that, but a part of it is also that our, our, our safeties are actually really good. Trayvon Merrick, Marcus Epps are good football players. And, you know, last season we didn't have Epps and our secondary struggled a little bit. Uh, I think Epps is a very smart, high IQ football player. He makes plays. He's a really, really good player. And I'm really glad the Raiders have him. He deserves so much credit, right? Uh, the guy's made play after play after play. And another guy that makes play after play is... Uh, what is he? is he in year three at this point? Malcolm Coons. I believe he's in year three now. Uh, coming out of Buffalo, I believe back in 2021, a uh, third round pick coming out of Buffalo. I compared him to Cleo Mack at that time because of his fantastic pass rushing ability. The guy was great last night against Rashawn Slater. Some people say he's a top five left tackle. Malcolm Coons whooped his ass. Uh, multiple sacks, multiple forced fumbles, and they weren't even like this guy like cleaned up something where someone else forced uh, pressure. This guy was the pressure. This guy was the guy that got after it, right? And he wins, not like, you know, Tyree Wilson just bull rushes and that's it. Malcolm Koontz wins the way Max Crosby wins. These guys have phenomenal pass rushing technique. Uh, On one of them, Malcolm Koontz is going to, uh, he's going to cross chop on one of them, which was the John Jenkins return back for a touchdown. Phen- phenomenal job by Koontz, of course, to get the pressure. I know some people are going to say, oh, you know, the quarterback tried rolling out of there and it was an effort play. That was not an effort play. Malcolm Koontz was doubled at the line of scrimmage by the tight end. He had to get past the tight end. Uh, and then it was Rashawn Slater and he cross chopped him and beat him with a very nice move. And he got to the quarterback and forced the fumble. His other sack he had, this one came earlier on in the game. It was the same thing. Uh, he didn't you know, just use effort. He didn't just lock in and just kind of wait until the quarter. Like this guy went in, in there and he used his pass rushing ability. He used the double hand swipe and he's kind of just hit the corner on Rashawn Slater and he got to the quarterback. Those are pass rushing moves that Malcolm Kuntz is us- utilizing. And this is what he had shown us in college and it's translating into the NFL. I think Malcolm Kuntz, and I believe he's in year three. Don't quote me. He might be in year four, but I'm pretty sure he's in year three. The guy is fantastic. He's developing. He's, you know, this is exactly what you expect with third round picks. You know, not every third round pick has to be a bust, right? Like historically speaking for the Raiders, Malcolm Kuntz is developing. It's it's the same way where Arden Key kind of developed. And then, you know, Arden Key with the Raiders had like four sacks. And since he's left the Raiders, he has like 17 sacks or something crazy like that. Uh, I think Malcolm Kuntz's best football is ahead of him. And I think for the Raiders, Malcolm Kuntz should be 100% you know, either starting or a part of the rotation. And some people are going to say, let's just move Tyree Wilson to the defensive tackle spot. Uh, I don't agree with that. You know, I watched Tyree Wilson against the Chargers, although he had a couple of nice run reps. Uh, on the inside, Tyree Wilson just doesn't have the pass rushing tools and technique to consistently get after it. Uh, the Chargers do have two really, really good guards in Zion Johnson and Jamari Salier. I'm not sure if Salier played in this game. I really didn't pay attention, to be honest, you guys. 
Um, but they got two good guards, and, and if those two guys were the two starters, I can see why Tyree Wilson really didn't have any, um, why he didn't really make any plays against the pass rush, but um, we'll see, right? We'll see what ends up happening with Tyree Wilson. I would give him the opportunity to be, you know, Tyree Wilson, Max Crosby, Malcolm Coons as the three guys that rotate in and out on the outside, and then in obvious pass rushing situations, put Tyree Wilson on the inside, and I'm okay with that. That's how the Raiders want to kind of go forward. Uh, there were a couple of bad plays as well on the defensive side. Uh, one that comes to mind was the 79-yard touchdown pass that Amik Robertson basically got burned off the left edge. Uh, to me, it looks like it was a cover four pre-snap based off of how the two safeties and the two cornerbacks aligned. And based off of what Trayvon Merrick actually did within the play, to me, this was cover four. And, you know, these are the the little things that kind of stick out to me sometimes. Amik Robertson has now gotten burn deep a couple times and I know Meek Robertson makes plays right but we got to figure out would you rather have a guy that makes plays or a guy that gets beat occasionally deep for touchdowns because I know for this game it didn't matter right we obviously beat the crap out of the Chargers but there's going to be moments where the score is like you know 15 to 17 and it's the fourth quarter and will Meek Robertson step up in that moment and know his responsibility or will he not right so you know, again, I know this one just happened to be a touchdown. Uh, Amik Robertson's gotten beat in other plays too, where maybe he didn't, you know, realize what the play was. Uh, one play that comes to mind is a Chiefs game where a guy ran underneath and Amik Robertson ran. Uh, in my Nate Hobbs video, I kind of broke that play down a little bit, but you know, the Raiders got to figure it out, right? I don't know if that's a coaching thing or if Amik just wants to continuously make plays. I'm not mad at Amik leaving his responsibility to make a play, but you can't get beat in the obvious situation where he got beat, right? Like the ball wasn't even out. So one thing, if the defense, if you feel like, hey, uh, I've seen this look, a screen's coming and I'm going to jump it, that's one thing, right? But you got to make sure that if you're going to do those things, you're on the same page with your safety, right? Um, talking about jumping screens and and making plays, there were two plays of the game that I got to give shout outs to. Uh, Jack Jones, man picked off a play in which we've seen this play on tape. This was a play that I've actually uh, seen while doing offensive line content of the charge, or at least watching their offensive line from my other YouTube channels. Uh, Jack Jones jumped it. He picked it off. And to me, this is phenomenal. Uh, this almost makes me feel like there's a reason why Bill Belichick ultimately brought Jack Jones in. He is smart, right? Uh, he obviously learned something with the Patriots about watching tape and figuring out certain keys and, you know, whatever the cutups were that he was given or he went and found himself, he knew that, hey, these are maybe like four plays that these guys will come to at least once a game. And that screenplay was one of them. And he took his shot. He took his opportunity. He jumped it and he took it the distance. To me, that was one of the plays of the game for me. The other one was the play you guys already seen. It was the Malcolm Coons uh, sack, right? I, I love the fact that it was the it was a cross chop. It wasn't just given to him. He had to go earn it the same way Jack Jones had to go earn it. Uh, and, the, of course, the Malcolm Coons one was picked up by John Jenkins. So, shout out to Jenkins picking it up. Uh, you know, some people will look at Jenkins and say, this guy's slow. But people don't realize he's faster than all of us. John Jenkins is fast as hell. He's an NFL player. So, he looks slow compared to everybody else. But uh, he's fast, man. 17 miles an hour. People don't realize that is fast. John Jenkins is going to smoke most of us, right? So, a uh, shout out to John Jenkins for the touchdown. Malcolm Coons for forcing it. Jack Jones for the, uh, for the uh, interception. Also returned to the house. Uh, shout out to the defense, man. Guys are absolutely playing phenomenal for the Raiders right now. They're playing inspired. Uh, you know, I don't even care if the Raiders, you know, I, I'm not against it either way. You know, if Antonio Pierce is the coach or not. Obviously, in the past, I've stated that I think the Raiders need to get an offensive minded head coach. I'm not against it either way, right? I just hope the Raiders actually figure it out and they stop wasting draft picks, right? I just hope the Raiders can go ahead and go forward and just take the obvious players that are going to have success. You know, had the Raiders been able to do this uh, for the last six drafts, we're in a much better place, right? And I won't go back into the Carl Joseph and Gary and Conley drafts. Uh, that was 2016, 2017, because I, I, I didn't I didn't analyze the draft at that time. Uh, 2018 was the first year I started focusing on the draft. Uh, even then, that was, you know, I wasn't so focused. I knew all the guys in the draft, but from 2019 forward, you know, I've known the top 200 players and I had watched the tape on the top 200 players. 
Um, the season's going to come to an end in about three weeks. At that point, for the next six months, I'll be, sp- no, not six, but the next four months, I'll be spending time watching every single player. And I know the Raiders have scouts and those type of people that are also doing that, but they just got to take the obvious picks, right? We haven't done that since 2019. The obvious players are right in front of you. We haven't taken those guys, but my hope is, is whoever makes decisions for the Raiders next makes the right decision. I don't know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, how how great of a game was that, man? Make sure you guys let me know in the comments below how you guys felt about that one. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time with another video.